Welcome to my workplace. My name is John Galligan, author of Bad Axe County and Dead Man Dancing and a few others. And I think like many writers, a day's work for me begins the night before. And for me, the night before preferably looks like this. At a campfire uh, on my land next to the Bad Axe River, where I do a lot of my writing. And I like to sit quietly with the stream and the fire and the whippoorwill and whatever else is going on and review a day's work and kind of frame the next day's work in my mind uh, before I go to bed. And we'll see you in the morning. Morning. Here I am at my camp on the South Fork of the Bad Axe River. In the circular tour you saw a camper and a shelter for various kinds of weather. I don't always work here, but when I'm not working here, I wish I was. Um, I think like every writer, I have a favorite place that combines things that I love that are familiar, things that stimulate me, and things that bring me peace. See you tonight around the campfire. The book I'm reading right now is called Cloud Bursts by a favorite writer of mine, Thomas McGuane, collected in New Stories. And I'm going to read a paragraph from a story in it called Sportsman. This is a sort of a coming of age story about two boys uh, on the shores of Lake Superior uh, and the accident that um, separates them and later brings them together. It's a beautiful story. This is the pivotal moment. That August, we were diving off the pilings near the entrance to the thoroughfare canal. We had talked about salvaging boats from the Black Friday storm of 1916 when the Bob Lowe steamer passed. The wash came in and sucked the water down around the pilings. Jimmy dove from the tallest one, arcing down the length of the creosoted spar into the green, clear water. And then he didn't come up. Not to begin with. When he did, the first thing that surfaced was the curve of his back, white and Ohio-looking in its oval lake of lake water. It was a back that was never to widen with muscle or stoop with worry because Jimmy had just then broken his neck. I remember getting him out on the gravel shore. He was wide awake and his eyes poured tears. His body shuddered continuously, and I recall his fingers fluttered on the stones with a kind of purpose. I had never heard sounds like that from his mouth in the thousands of hours we talked. I learned from a neighbor that my screams brought help, and similarly, I can't imagine what I would sound like screaming. Perhaps no one can. My favorite independent bookstore is Mystery to Me in Madison, Wisconsin, and I hope that you have a favorite as well, and I hope that you support them. Happy reading. Good night.